Okay, I'm going to be calculating the area of each of these figures. So my recommendation is that the first thing you do is always determine what type of shape it is and write down the formula for yourself because that gives you an outline to work with. So for my triangle, I'm thinking the area of the triangle is equal to one half times the base times the length of its height. In order to find the base and height, we always want to look for a right angle. And I can see that a right angle exists here. So one of those sides is pointing to the base, the other is pointing to the corresponding height. I wasn't given either of them, but I do see that I have a 30-60 right triangle. And I know that in every 30-60 right triangle, across from my smallest angle is my smallest side, my hypotenuse is always twice as big, and across from the 60 degree angle is my side with the length of s times the square root of 3. To start with, I know that 2s is equal to 10. And if 2s equals 10, the length of side PQ would be equal to 5 inches. And since I now know what s is, I can remove the s in my final expression and replace it to 5 to find that this side has a length of 5 square root of 3. Now that I know my base and my height, it's just a matter of doing my calculations. Area is equal to 1 half times 5 times 5 square root of 3. Now, if you've already written down 12.5 square root of 3, not proper form, because one of our rules with square roots says we're not allowed to use decimals. So the easiest way to avoid this is just leave everything in fraction form, showing that your um, anything that wasn't already a fraction has a denominator of 1, and I can think multiply my numerators, 25 square root of 3, multiply my denominators, 2 times 1 times 1 is 2, so my final answer in proper form form is 25 square root of 3 halves, and make sure that you always include a unit with your answer. For our second example, this time we're looking at a kite. In a kite, the area is equal to 1 half times the length of the first diagonal times the length of the second diagonal. And our given information includes the length of one of our diagonals. So I'm immediately going to remove the d sub 1 and replace it with the length of BD. The other information that we're given besides the fact that BD has a length of 8 meters is the fact that angle BCD is 36 and angle BAD is 154. In addition to labeling my given information on my diagram, I'm thinking to calculate the area, I need my second diagonal. And the easiest way to find it is to be able to see it. So I'm going to go back to my picture and draw that second diagonal. And this red diagonal that I've drawn from A to C happens to be the diagonal that gives us that axis of symmetry so we could fold those two triangles together and have them be congruent. That means that our 8 meter diagonal is being bisected into two segments that measure 4 meters each. My 154 degree angle is bisected into two 77 degree angles, and the 36 degree angle is being bisected into two angles that each measure 18. And where my diagonals intersect, I know that they're perpendicular, so I'm getting four little right triangles. Um, most of the time when you are missing information for area formulas, the key is going to be finding those right triangles and asking yourself what you know about them. So what I see over here is that I have a right triangle with an angle measure of 77 degrees and a leg that has a length of four. And I see that this other leg is one piece of that unknown diagonal length. So I'm going to call that X. 77 isn't an angle measure that has any special formulas related to it, so we're going to go ahead and set up an equation using SOHCAHTOA. I'm thinking the side that I don't know and don't really need is the hypotenuse. Across from the 77 degree angle is my leg that's opposite, that has a length of 4, and the leg that's a piece of my diagonal is the leg that's adjacent to the 77. O, A means that I need to use tangent. The tangent of 77 is equal to my opposite leg divided by the length of my adjacent leg. And now to solve, I'm thinking let me find out what the tangent of 77 is. And to four decimal places, that equals 4.3315. I'd be multiplying that by x. And then my 4 and my 1 are going to be multiplied together. 
and in order to find x, I have to divide to the nearest one decimal place. This gives me a segment length of 0.9. And then I'm going to come back here and look at my second right triangle. So I still have a leg with a length of 4. Now I have an 18 degree angle. Across from my right angle is my hypotenuse. Across from my 18 degree angle is my opposite leg. And over here, I have an unknown leg that I'm going to call Y, and that would be the leg adjacent to the 18 degree angle. Adjacent and opposite, again, together tells me I need to set up a tangent equation. Tangent of 18 is equal to my opposite leg divided by my adjacent leg. When I find the tangent of 18, to four decimal places, that's equal to 0.3249. My cross products give me 0.3249y is equal to four. And to find y, I need to take four and divide by 0.3249. So to one decimal place, the length of this segment is equal to 12.3. And even after all that work, we aren't finished because the initial goal was to find the area. So back to my area formula. I know that the area of a kite is equal to 1 half times the length of one diagonal, and we were given the 8, times the length of the other diagonal. And my second diagonal is a combination of the two segments that we just found. 0.9 combined with 12.3 gives us a length of 13.2. And when we multiply these together, our final result is an area of approximately 52.8 square meters. Moving on to our third example, this time we weren't given a diagram, just some numeric information about the sizes of the angle measures and the lengths of the sides of a parallelogram. Now one thing that you have to be careful of when you're drawing your own diagram is you're drawing it in a way that's going to make sense. So when I see that angle B is 135 degrees, I want to make sure that vertex B really is next to an angle that looks to be obtuse. If you accidentally labeled your B down here, you're not going to be able to draw an altitude so that you get a right triangle that could actually contain 180 degrees. So based on the way that I've drawn my diagram, I have my 15 over here. Um, I know that this side has a length of 6. Here's my angle B at 135 degrees, and I'm thinking, I need an altitude. Now, it's possible to draw an altitude anywhere perpendicular to the side, but I want to draw the altitude so that it's going to be useful. And useful typically means we want to make a right triangle. So to make a right triangle, I'm going to start at B and go directly down perpendicular to side AD. I know that alternate interior angles are congruent, which gives me a right angle up here. And if this entire angle measured 135 and 90 is over here, I know that this acute angle of the right triangle has to be 45. Or we could have used what we know about parallelograms. Opposite angles are congruent, consecutive angles are supplementary, and 180 minus 135 would give us an, another way of finding our acute angle measures of the right triangle. Once I know that I have a 45-45 triangle, no Sokotoa this time because 45-45s are special triangles. L, L, and L square root of 2. Now we do have to remember how to work with square roots. If L times the square root of 2 is equal to 15, I can solve for L by using division. Anything divided by itself is 1, but I'm not allowed to leave my answer in this form. One of our square root rules says no square roots are allowed in the denominator, so we need to do some rationalizing. And I'm going to leave my answer in proper form, which would be this improper fraction of 15 square root of 2 over 2. And because L, um, for my right triangle, represents the height of this parallelogram, that's going to allow me to go back and use my area formula. So now that I know the height, I can say what's my area. Well, the area of my parallelogram is equal to base times height. And in this case, 
if I'm using this as my height, the corresponding base is going to be 6. And if we take 6 times 15 square root of 2 over 2, that's going to give us an area of 45 square root of 2 square units. Now you might be looking at this and saying, but when I drew my picture, mine was labeled a little bit differently. And that's possible because I also could have started off by putting point B at the vertex of one of my angles that appears to be obtuse. But instead of saying A was next to B in this direction, I might have said A is over here and that would give me C and D. Drawing in my altitude from B is still going to result in a 45-45 triangle, but now things are going to look a little different because I have AB and CD being the sides that are 15 units long, and AD and BC would be equal to 6. So in this case, when I go to solve for L, I'd have L square root of 2 is equal to 6. Dividing by the square root of 2 and simplifying the result is going to give me L equals 3 square root of 2. So you can see that as long as you're setting up your parallelogram properly, it doesn't matter which combination of base and height you use, the result is still going to give me 15 times 3 square root of 2 is 45 square root of 2. The size of the parallelogram doesn't change because I labeled it differently, it's just that the work to get to that answer looks a little different. Now, for example number four, we have a trapezoid. Trapezoid formulas are a little bit more involved just because they involve more dimensions, but I'm still going to start the same way. Write out my formula so that I can see exactly what I need in order to find the area, and then I can be a little bit more focused on how am I going to find that. And in this particular question, we're being told that the altitude has a measure of 9 inches, so I can begin by removing the H and replacing it with the value of 9. So now the question becomes, how do I find the lengths of the bases? Now when I draw in this altitude, I could draw it perpendicular to, to both bases anywhere in the diagram. But useful means make a right triangle, and if I start at A, that's going to give me a little 45-45 triangle. I know that one leg is 9, which means that my other leg will also be 9, and my hypotenuse has a length of 9 square root of 2. Now we were given information about segment AB. We were told that segment AB is congruent to segment AD, which is also congruent to segment DC which means that we've already found the lengths of one of the bases. Area equals one half times nine times, and for my first base, I'm going to replace B1 with nine square root of two. But I still need to find the length of that second base. Now, for my second base, I'm also going to look at a right triangle. And because these two sides are congruent to each, each other, it's an isosceles trapezoid, which means my base angles are also congruent. And what I'm looking at over here is another little 45-45 triangle. So I know that this base from B to C has a length of 9 here. It has a length of 9 here. And because this quadrilateral in the center is a rectangle, I know that this piece is going to be 9 square root of 2. And when I combine all three of those pieces together, it gives me a length of, for BC of 18 plus 9 square root of 2. So back to my formula template, B sub 2, 18 plus 9 square root of 2. And now it's just a matter of going through the algebra involved to simplify. So I'm thinking 1 half times 9 is going to give me 9 halves, and I'm multiplying that by the quantity 18 square root of 2, combining my two like terms, plus 18. 9 halves times 18 square root of 2 is going to give me 81 square root of 2, and 9 halves times 18 gives me 81. And what I'm calculating is how many little square inches will cover up that trapezoid.